Welcome back, everybody. It is April 18th, 2023. I hope you all had a good weekend. We are looking at the last 30 days of earthquakes of 2.5 and higher. Now, of course, we're not going to talk about all these. I have some specific things I want to point out here, including a very odd situation that has taken place over the last 24 hours. These sets of earthquakes that have taken place in the Northeast and in Canada. Now, again, I got to say, this is within the last 24 hours. Each one of these quakes that you see or or reported seismic activity this is from volcano discovery some of these are disregarded some of these are meteor explosions as we have talked about in many videos but i find it very very interesting to see these pairs of earthquakes that have taken place all in a very short period of time also just 11 hours ago a 6.6 .6 downgraded from a 7.1 was the highest i saw it i believe this was easily a 7.0 earthquake and take a look at the the depth 562.5 kilometers or 350 miles deep we've got a lot of solar activity taking place we're not going to really look at the sun today i got to keep this a little short but any enhanced solar activity is going to blow this spot up remember deep large earthquakes tend to lead to larger shallow earthquakes or at least a bunch of mid-sized earthquakes that are much shallow in this area now what else is in this area the famous eruption of the hunga tonga volcano. Jumping over to Google Earth, it is also very interesting that this earthquake has taken place 355 miles away from the Hunga Tonga volcano eruption at 350 miles in depth. Now, because this earthquake was so deep, it will absolutely have effects deep underground where magma constantly sits until enough pressure is built up to where one of these volcanoes will go off. And that was the case with the Hunga Tonga volcano. We had a lot of large and then mid-sized earthquakes around this entire area that stretches down this trench that is completely loaded with volcanoes. So not just the Hunga Tonga volcano is within range of being affected by this earthquake, but we have 10 to 12 other volcanoes that stretch all the way down almost to the northern end of New Zealand. In fact, here's an image that kind of shows you a little bit about those volcanoes. It's a little blurry. It was one of the best images I could find that labels where these volcanoes are. And just look at how many are stacked just in this immediate area to the west of Fiji. We got Tonga right in the dead center right here, surrounded by about seven to eight different volcanoes, and then another five or six to the north of that area. And then as you go down this trench, this fault line of two tectonic plates, we have another set of five volcanoes. Now, we don't hear much about them because they don't go off too often, but we cannot forget that the Hunga Tonga volcano erupted without any notice whatsoever. I know there's a lot of odd theories about what happened with that volcano, volcano and what actually set it off but I'm not here to talk about that I'm here to show you where these main volcanoes are the ones that are most at risk for erupting and then we got to remember that 7.0 earthquake took place right in this area now had this been a more shallow quake I believe it wouldn't have as much of an effect or a possible effect on any of these volcanoes but because it was so deep in the crust 350 miles that is absolutely deep enough to affect where this magma comes from and could easily add a lot of stress to this entire fault line that runs all the way down to northern New Zealand, as I spoke about. Of course, any other information or major activity that takes place in this area, you can already see in the last week, we've had a few significant earthquakes that stretch all the way down this line, this fault line right here, where all these volcanoes are, the 5.2 near the Kermetic Islands, and another 5.0 just south of Fiji, and also just south of our 6.6, .6, downgraded from a 7.0. Also, another large earthquake in Russia after that large volcano eruption. If we go to our significant earthquakes of the past 30 days, remember just 10 days before that eruption, a 6.5 took place south of the volcano, but this earthquake was very much a player in why that volcano went off, and now we're seeing even more activity. As you can see, just north of that large earthquake that took place a while back, a 5.6, which was also downgraded from a 6.1. They love downgrading these things. And finally, I want to talk about these dual sets of earthquakes that have taken place again, like I said, in the last 24 hours. We'll start with these two right here near Georgetown, Virginia. You can see this was 20 hours ago. The depth is unspecified. They're still trying to figure this one out. The second taking place 22 hours ago. These were two hours apart, just basically miles from each other. Then we move into the Long Island region of New York. We got one here that took place 12 hours ago, also still obtaining data on this one. And then the 
22nd was 22 hours ago. So another close proximity set of earthquakes or seismic activity events five hours apart. Moving into the Massachusetts area 22 hours ago. Another unspecified depth seismic activity event. And then the one right next to it 11 hours ago. So a little bit more of a spread in time between these two about 10 hours in difference but still within a 24 hour period. Finally let's move up towards Canada. Quebec 10 hours ago depth unspecified and then just about 12 hours before that another unspecified seismic event just northeast of the first quake of that set of two leaving us with four dual sets of earthquakes taking place all within a day it's very rare to see that whether they are finalized as earthquakes or not something obviously took place in these areas we are not going to see these on the usgs they do not deal with earthquakes like this and a lot of times they don't even report them at all even if they are actual earthquakes i will leave the link to this website specifically so you could check these out on your own you could see the distance between them the reports that came in of people who felt them but keep in mind the immediate area that all of this has taken place the northeast of the united states and then canada this wasn't spread out all over the country this all took place in the basic northeast region now what does that say does that have anything to do with the new madrid fault line or any of the other fault lines that run through new jersey we know of a lot of fault lines that do not show up on maps you have to do a lot of research to find these fault lines but they do exist there's a big fault line that runs right through new york down into pennsylvania and then basically connects with the new madrid fault line which as i've said in many videos is just as dangerous and prone to major earthquakes as the san andreas fault line all right my friends that's what i got for you for now sorry for the short video got some stuff to do today i was in canada for a few days had an amazing time and once again i hope you all had a good weekend shout out to canada and i'll see you all in the next video take care bye bye Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.